Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the channel. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I normally do today. For those of you guys who have been watching for a while, you'll know that typically when I go out fishing, it's to get as far away from everybody as I possibly can and just be one with nature. The smells, the sounds, everything about being out in nature, away from society, I just absolutely love. It's the most peaceful and refreshing thing I can possibly think of. And typically I don't like sharing my spots with people and when I film, I'm very careful not to include things that could give away spots. Usually because there's unfortunately people out there that are gonna go into those spots and kill all the fish, foul, hook them, keep way more than they should, and just destroy the ecosystem and the beautiful rivers that we have here in Alaska. But lately I have been seeing a lot of people on social media asking questions in the groups that I'm part of, and I've been getting a lot of direct messages asking me about where people should go fish, and more specifically, people up here and tourists that are coming to the state are looking for places that you can easily access off the road system and fish for salmon, or places that you can take your children where they're pretty much guaranteed to catch themselves a salmon. So so I figured today I would do a little bit of a public service to the fishing community here in Alaska and take you guys to a spot that you can take your children, take yourselves, and you're pretty much guaranteed to catch multiple species of salmon, rainbow trout, and arctic grayling. This is an absolutely beautiful spot and there's just so many fish here right now. So today we're going out to the Willow Creek State Recreation Area. This is the confluence of Willow Creek and the Big Susitna River. Like I said, this isn't a very secret spot. Everybody kind of knows about this spot, which is why I'm perfectly comfortable sharing it with you guys there's a whole campground here a whole day use parking lot it's only five bucks to park for the day super good deal and you can just spend the entire day out here I was actually out here for like 10 hours yesterday and I hooked over a hundred fish it's just absolutely incredible and I'm super excited to share this experience with you guys so you and your family can come down here and hook up on some fish so I'll see you guys in just a few minutes when we get down to the recreation area we're almost there we're gonna get loaded up and we're gonna go catch some fish today guys I'm gonna show you some techniques and some of the lures some of the tackle and that kind of thing that you can use to catch some of these fish down here so I'll see you guys in a minute When you guys pull in here there's going to be this little thing right here you just go around that and then you'll see this sign up here on the right hand side campground is going to be to your right and then if you go straight you're going to pull right into the day use parking lot which is where we're going to go right now the parking area can be pretty small so it really helps if you get out here nice and early in the day to secure yourself a parking spot but it's not too bad So there's the fees for you guys if you're wondering. There's also a raft takeout here. $20 a night campsite, $5 a day for single vehicle parking. gear out. All right guys, we're on our way down to the river right now. So when you walk out of the campground, you're gonna see this real nice foot trail here. It's a really nice trail, super easy to walk. So if you guys are up here on vacation and have elderly family coming up or something like that, or you just have a bunch of kids or even disabled family members, this is a super good spot for you guys to come because it's super easy to walk down this trail right to the water. There's no crazy hills or big rocks or anything like that. And you can get right out onto the beach. This is also a really good place to come if you're not familiar with uh, regulations or how to fish or anything like that. There's all kind of billboards and things like that around telling you what you can and can't do. So real good place for beginners. And of course there's the ever important 
outhouses if you gotta do your business. That way you're not squatting over here in the woods or something. Nice chum, dude. Is that a silver I got or is that a big old pink? Okay, so you guys saw all those people that were fishing right at the uh, the boardwalk there where I walked out from the main trail from the parking lot. That's a real good spot. You can take your kids down there. Super easy access. You don't even have to get off the boardwalk to fish for some of those humpies that are down in there. And as the silver start moving in, it's just going to get better and better. But as you saw, I waded across um, that other little section of creek over there, made my way through the woods, and now I'm out on this little sandbar. And this is a particular spot that I really like to come because as you can see, there's a lot less people and you're still on really good fish. There's a whole bunch of fish hanging out right in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some camera gear set up and we're just gonna start fishing and show you guys how cool this spot is. Now, one of the biggest questions that I get asked out here is what I'm using. And so we're gonna cover some of that real quick before we start fishing. Um, I definitely recommend using an eight weight or heavier out here. You can definitely get away fishing pinks with a five or six weight. But the problem with that is, is the silvers and the chums are starting to come in as well. And if you end up hooking into a large one of those on much less than an eight weight, you're definitely going to have problems. So this is a fairly cheap rod. This is a Fluger Summit. It's nothing special, but it's a nine foot eight weight and it works perfectly fine for me. And personally, I really like the feel. This is a graphite rod and I've just had no problems with it. It's been a really trustworthy rod and it's between the $100 and $200 range. It's a real cheap rod. I've got that paired with an Okuma SLV 7.8. This is my favorite budget reel. I run these on all of my fly rods and you can pick these up for between 50 and 100 bucks uh, depending on what weight you go with. Now, in my opinion, even more important than that reel is going to be your line. This is the Rio Avid Trout series. This is about $80 worth of line that I have on here, but I highly recommend it. This is a 300 gram, 24 foot sinking tip, which is gonna help you get down to the level where those salmon are with running less weight, and it's gonna make it easier for you to cast. Probably the biggest thing that I get asked about and that I see asked in Facebook groups is what exactly you're using out here when you're fishing for these salmon. So personally for these pink salmon, I really like using flesh flies. Obviously this one got rallied yesterday and doesn't really have much material left on it. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off and we're gonna put on a new one. I've got probably about six feet a liter on this right now. I personally don't like running much more than that when I'm fishing this nice shallow riffly water. But if you're fishing deeper water, definitely put more liter on. That's really just a personal preference and it depends what kind of fly line you have too. Using this Avid Trout Series 300 gram sinking tip, I really don't have any issues with uh, my line getting down to where I need it. So I can run a shorter liter because that tip is going to sink on the fly line as well. Now I'm gonna put on another flesh fly. Like I said, I really like using flesh flies out here. They're nice and bright, easy to see, kind of like a Russian river fly, but the hook's a little bit smaller. So it's a little bit easier when you're fishing for these pinks to not accidentally snag them in the back, as opposed to having some huge like number two or number one hook or something like that. Obviously this one is still soaking wet because I was using it a whole ton yesterday. This one is in the peach color, but you can definitely use peach, red, pink, pretty much any of those colors are gonna work out here for you. So that's what it looks like. I think this one is a number four if I remember correctly, but it might be a number six. Now in terms of weight, I also get asked a lot about that. So I like to run my first weight probably about 10 inches to a foot up my leader from the fly. And then I like to run another small one up top, probably about 10 inches to a foot below where my main line starts. And the reason I do that is that way this entire section of line floats 
on a level plane through the water. Whereas if I only had that weight on, it would float like this through the water. Or if I only had that weight on, it would float like this through the water, which isn't going to be very effective if you're trying to floss these fish. And even if you're not trying to floss the fish, if you're trying to get an actual strike out of these salmon, it's gonna make it difficult because if you don't have the right amount of weight on, this is gonna be floating up above their level and they're gonna have to rise for it, which typically they don't do as much as if this was right in front of their face down in the bottom. Now, another really important thing to note too, is if you're looking at an area like this, Obviously you guys can see all the fish that are in here. We have some really good flowing water out there, but it gets slower as it gets close to shore. So if you're trying to floss these fish, you're gonna have a little bit of difficulty trying to do that in this slower moving water. So we wanna target the ones that are out there, or you wanna look for an area that is going to be easier to floss those fish. Now, I was fishing this spot yesterday, so I already know what I'm looking for. But if you look right here, we've got this log jam, and then right at the end of the log jam, it's actually funneling those fish around the end, which is right where that quick flowing water starts to meet the slower water, which is perfect because I can cast this out there and just let it skim right along the bottom around the end of that log jam. And it's gonna be right in front of their faces. About 50% of the fish that I was catching yesterday were actually striking that flesh fly. And the other 50% I was flossing. So by looking for an area like that, you can get the perfect combination of flossing or the ones that are willing to strike will strike. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this in and uh, start catching some fish. Now typically when I'm trying to floss these fish, I like to be a little bit up from where I'm trying to actually floss the fish. So the ones that I'm gonna be targeting are right at the end of this log going down. So I'll throw straight out and let it drift. If you throw up, what's gonna happen is your main line is gonna catch the current and it's gonna pull it all weird. And usually it'll be dragging like this through the water, weight forward, and that's not really going to work. So we're gonna get some line out here and we'll throw it straight out. And we're just gonna let that drift right down through that school of pinks that's right there. And there's one. And that was actually a strike. I saw that fish come right for it and she took it right in the mouth. So like I said, about 50% are gonna do that and the other 50% you're gonna have to floss. But with how many fish are in here right now, it doesn't really matter what tactic you're using. Pretty much anything is gonna work just fine for you. I'll get her up on this little bar right here. And the fun thing about these pinks, a lot of people really don't like fish in form. They don't taste very good, even though you can use them in chowders and stuff like that. But the fun thing about these pinks is if you're just looking to catch some fish, feel a tug on the line, or you want to get your kid on some fish, these are an excellent fish to do that with. They fight real hard. They're a lot of fun. And you can just sit out here all day long and play catch and release with them. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> There's another one. Come on over here. One's fighting a little harder than that last one. He's a little bit bigger. This is a male. That first one was a female. And there you go. Nice, healthy pink salmon. Let's go ahead and send him back. He's bleeding a little bit, but he'll be fine. Oh, got that one in the dorsal fin. Let's see if we can get that off. There we go. The only problem with how many fish are down here is it's really easy to accidentally snag up, which obviously isn't allowed. And uh, it's not good for the fish either. It's just not a good thing to do, not a good thing to get in the habit of doing. So if you end up snagging one, like in the dorsal fin, like we just did, usually it's pretty easy to pop that hook before you stress the fish out too much. But if you can't, go ahead and pull that fish in to the best of your ability, pop that hook out and just get it right back in the water. State law says you're not allowed to take them out of the water if you accidentally snag them. That one's a snag. Let's see if that hook will come out. And if you do snag one, it's important to make sure you keep your rod bent away from you because when it pops out like that, if you are pulling straight back, that hook is gonna hit you right in the face. So also always wear glasses. <laughs> 
a lot of times too with these pinks the males are much easier to floss if that's what you're going for they've got a much bigger mouth and typically swim with it wide open so you can kind of just run that line right through it make it nice and easy for you there's one Ooh, there's a nice chum right there. Got him. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> Come on up here. There's another nice chum, real pretty fish. Look at those purple tiger stripes. Absolutely incredible. And this guy just fought so much harder than those pinks. Let's let him go. There we go, that's in the mouth. There is a silver hanging out right in there. He's like right in like a million pinks. He's looked at my lure a couple times like he was gonna strike it and he didn't. Come on. I just gotta see if I can get it in there without one of these pinks snapping it up. <laughs> He's right in there. It's kinda hard to see with the glare, but I can see his head. There he is, got him. No, oh, come on. I need to get a good hook set on him. Where'd he go, is that him right there? That's him. Come on. There he goes. All right, I'm just gonna let him do his thing. Just gonna let him do his thing. Oh, geez. Come on, don't go running away. I really need to get a silver today. <laughs> oh, that's a nice fish. I think what we're gonna do is just kind of walk him up the bank here. I don't wanna screw around too much because he is uh, pretty, pretty upset. I'm gonna walk him up to this nice flat spot right here. Line in. Let's see if we can just beach him. Oh, jeez. Come on. Gotcha. Get this guy cleaned off here and get a good look at him real quick. It's a pretty good sized silver, though. I'm pretty happy with that. There's definitely not a ton of them coming in yet. I only saw two caught yesterday. I saw one other guy hook into one and lose it, and I hooked into one and lost lost it myself, but that's a pretty darn good sized silver right there. Look at that. That's a beautiful fish. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Make a little uh, 
spot over here and get a stringer set up for him. But I am pretty darn pleased with that. Now something that you guys can do if you don't have a stringer like me, because apparently I forgot to bring mine, is once you're sure that fish is dead and not gonna flop around, you can take a big stick like this, run it right through his gill, out his mouth, and then go ahead and drive that nice and hard down into the mud. I like to keep them in the water if I'm gonna be out fishing for a while, just to keep them nice and fresh. And typically what I like to do is I'll just kind of tuck them up into a, a nice little nook right here and that way the current isn't gonna take them away and pop that stick out when we're not paying attention or something like that because that would kind of suck. So go ahead and drive that right in and then what I like to do is get my little knife out and we're just gonna cut his gills just like that and you can see all that blood starts pouring out. And you wanna do that right after you catch him and that way all that blood will run right out of him and you don't have to do it when you're flaying the fish later, which just creates a big mess. So I'll go right through, get those nice and sliced up, and then I'll go down through the bottom and cut right at the base of the head, right through that little spot there. And he's just gonna bleed out right like that. And staying in this nice cool water is gonna keep that fish nice and fresh while we keep fishing. All right guys, well it's been a ton of fun out here today. Had an absolute blast, caught so many pinks. I got the silver that I was looking for and I got a couple chums just to fight and that was a ton of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did and more importantly, I hope you guys learned a cool place that you can come catch a ton of salmon, possibly a silver right now and bring the kids because they will definitely have a blast down here. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you on the next one.